Welcome back to our channel, Nerd Town. Today, we will talk about The Penguin, which I think is the best opening for a superhero series, even though it has almost nothing to do with superheroes. This series takes us back to the time of beautiful gangster Cyric The Sopranos and the legendary Breaking Bad. Yes, I am not exaggerating. I do not like to compare TV shows, but in my opinion, DC has outdone Marvel this time. At the time DC released The Penguin, Marvel released Agatha All Along. According to IMDb, Agatha All Along received a rating of 6.9, while The Penguin received a rating of 8.8. .8, a high rating that is not easy for series to get. Now, let's begin. The episode included a great story and acting from everyone present, especially Colin Farrell, who excelled in his role as The Penguin. His expressions of frustration and brokenness when someone bullies him, followed by evil and vengeful looks, made the character shine. His way of manipulating others is like a smart mouse watching the lions fight while he watches from a distance. His actions and his limping appearance take us back to the pages of the comics, where we feel that he came out of those pages with his malicious and terrifying personality. Then we have the crazy woman Sophia Falcon, who got out of the asylum. In the few scenes of her in the first episode, she showed us her madness and sharp intelligence at the same time. A formidable opponent, she caused great fear for the penguin, so he decided to escape, but his mother prevented him from doing so. This was the general scene of the first episode. Now let's start talking about the details that will contain spoilers for the first four episodes. In the first episode of the series, The Penguin, events escalate at a crazy speed and continue to present a gloomy and dark atmosphere befitting the city of Gotham. The story begins a week after the events of the movie The Batman, with the chaos sparked by the Riddler, who planned to flood the city, which led to opening the door to conflicts between gangs. What follows the disaster of the city's sinking is the beginning of the struggle over who will succeed Carmine Falcon, the leader of the largest crime family in the city. In brief, what happened in the movie The Batman was that the Riddler was not just a traditional killer. He carried out a series of assassinations targeting important officials, but most importantly, he killed Carmine Falcon, the character who held all the threads of organized crime in the city. With the fall of Falcon, the city lost its criminal leader, leaving a huge power vacuum and igniting the conflict over who would lead the drug trade in Gotham. The Falcon family, despite its power, has always worked behind the scenes. They don't get their hands dirty with the actual work. They rely on people like Penguin to carry out their plans. But the flood that destroyed their drug factory greatly affected their business. With the loss of stock, the family decided to close the factory and move to another city, away from the eyes of the police, who have become focused on them after the Riddler's explosions. Here comes Carmine Falcon's successor, his son, Alberto Falcon, who has always been in the shadows. Alberto shows ambition and a desire to surpass his father's legacy. He visits Penguin at his club, and they talk about an upcoming large drug shipment that will take the family to a new level of control over the market. But Alberto, in his arrogance, insults Penguin, which ignites the latter's anger. At a crucial moment, Penguin kills Alberto Falcon and hides his body with the help of one of his close associates. This move was not only an expression of anger, but marked the beginning of a major shift in Penguin's plan. Despite his apparent foolishness and unbridled ambition, Penguin takes advantage of Alberto's absence and takes credit for his plan, making Sophia suspicious. Penguin's true intelligence is revealed when he approaches Salvatore Moroni, the leader of the Moroni family, the rivals of the Falcon family. The Moroni family lost their influence and power after Carmine Falcon took over their business and threw them in prison. However, Penguin, with his skill in playing sides, returns the Moroni family ring, which Alberto was wearing when he was killed. Not only that, Penguin has his assistant cut off Alberto's finger, which was wearing the ring. With this move, Penguin convinces Sophia Falcon, Alberto's sister, that the Moroni family killed her brother in revenge for what the Falcon family did to them. With that, Penguin ignites a new gang war between the two families while he sits on the sidelines watching the chaos he has created. 
through this complex conflict, we discover that Penguin is nothing but a traitor by nature. In fact, he was once a subordinate of the Moroni family before he betrayed them and helped Falcon imprison them. Although everyone knows that Penguin has no loyalty to anyone, the major families have looked down on him, viewing him as weak and insignificant, who can be eliminated at any moment. The first episode was a strong opening for the series, creating a dark atmosphere that reflects the dark nature of Gotham. Feeling isolated from Batman's cinematic universe, this series has its own atmosphere and complex characters. As the conflicts between the Falcon and Moroni families escalate, it seems that the coming war will leave no one safe. In the second episode, we see how Penguin's plan to ignite a gang war has begun to bear fruit. He revived the Moroni family and restored their dignity, while making the accused of killing Alberto, the missing ring, as proof of that. In the second episode, we continue to see Sophia's mental state and her decisions, which are affected by the number wipe. The matter is no longer limited to her imagining the asylum and what was happening there in every place. Rather, she recalls her memories with her brother Alberto and that he was her only lifeline, especially since their relationship was special and very close. The conspiracy continues between John and Maroni around the Falcon family by taking the remains of their factory. Penguin's plan, although changing every moment, still plays in his favor, guiding them on a specific path so they know how to steal the cargo car. Although Penguin remained in a dangerous position, he was able to achieve his goal and gain the trust of the Falcon family, specifically by saving their trusted man, Castillo, who helped Sophia torture him in the last episode. After Alto Deberto's departure, the family became subject to Luca, their younger brother, whom Sophia sees as weak and who undermines the family's dignity every second with delay. On the other hand, Sophia finds herself amidst rising tensions following her brother's mysterious disappearance and the loss of their goods, with the Moroni family shamelessly boasting about their involvement. Through her investigation, Sophia discovers that a spy from within the Falcon family is feeding information to the Moronis. To unravel the truth, she seeks assistance from a corrupt police investigator, a former associate of her father's, hoping he can uncover the answers or lead her to someone who possesses vital information. Meanwhile, Eve, a friend of the Penguin, uncovers a shocking truth. The Penguin is responsible for Alberto Falcon's death. Taking Eve along with him is merely a cover, and the Penguin realizes that the game of exposing secrets has begun. He knows he must make the first move. Sophia and the corrupt investigator successfully kidnap one of the Moroni family's men. <laughs> the Penguin opts to eliminate this man, the only witness who could potentially unravel his scheme. He planned to blame Johnny, the assistant to Luca, the current head of the gang. However, when that plan fails and the gravity of the situation dawns on Sophia, she orders a thorough search to determine who possesses the murder weapon used to kill the man of the Moroni family. In a cunning maneuver, the Penguin plants the murder weapon in Castillo's pocket, setting him up to take the fall. The third episode shifts focus to Victor. It begins with a flashback that takes us back to his past, where we find him on an ordinary day in his neighborhood. He meets his girlfriend, Gracia, who reproaches him for being late, reminding him that their friends are waiting for them on the rooftop. After a hasty apology, Victor heads home where his family is gathered, engrossed in the news about Bella Real, the leading candidate for mayor. At home, Victor helps his father pack groceries and expresses his desire for a salary increase. However, his father insists they must make do with what they have. His sister chimes in, claiming they are taking advantage of him, which only fuels Victor's frustration. Despite trying to assert himself, he faces resistance from his family. Meanwhile, his mother gently suggests he invite Gracia to lunch, but he informs her that they already have plans. Before departing, Victor inquires about Calvin, a friend with questionable connections. His father reassures him that Calvin won't be around. Shortly after, Victor and his friends go to the rooftop where the atmosphere appears calm. Suddenly, Calvin's cousin and drug dealer, Calamar, arrives, igniting tension among the group. Gracia decides to leave, compelling Victor to follow her. 
she voices her desire to escape their neighborhood, deeming it dirty. In a bid to comfort her, Victor tries to express his affection for their community. However, their conversation is abruptly interrupted by the thunderous sounds of fireworks that rattle the city. In the ensuing chaos, a torrent of water floods the neighborhood, sweeping away buildings and causing devastation. Desperately, Victor attempts to call his mother, but the rising water obliterates their home, claiming the lives of his loved ones. In the present, Victor faces a transformed reality. He meets with the Penguin, who emphasizes that tonight is critical for their operations. They are set to deliver a new shipment of drugs, but Victor hesitates, haunted by Sophia's past as their adversary. The Penguin reassures him, stating they have internal support, and urges Victor to focus entirely on the mission, sweetening the deal with a $1,000 incentive. The scene shifts as Sophia knocks on the door. The Penguin instructs Victor to keep her occupied until he finishes his work. As they sit together, Sophia begins to interrogate him, revealing that the Penguin was once her driver. Their conversation then transitions to the warehouse, where chemist Trey Bloom demonstrates the drug production process, illuminating the dark nature of the drugs and their unsettling connection to their lives. After these revelations, Victor meets with Gracia, who confesses her desire to leave the city. As he tries to convince her to stay, he grapples with feelings of failure. Despite his efforts, he hands her some money to aid her escape, hinting that he may catch up with her later. Sophia returns to the Falcon Mansion, confronting Johnny, the Falcon Consigliere. He threatens her over the shifting power dynamics. But Sophia stands her ground, demonstrating her strength of will in defiance of his threats. Later, the Penguin and Sophia meet with Link Tsai, a key distributor in their operations. The tension escalates as the characters navigate the risks inherent in their business and the necessity of trust. The Penguin exudes confidence, proving his ability to manage the situation. Complications arise when the police confront Victor. In a clever twist, he manages to escape, intensifying the tension as events spiral. The stakes grow higher as they delve deeper into illegal dealings under increasingly precarious circumstances. The internal conflicts among the characters intensify as the Penguin and Sophia Falcon are taken by surprise. surprise. Victor finds himself at a crossroads, faced with a crucial decision about his future. Should he leave the city with his girlfriend, Gracia? or return to save the Penguin and Sophia from imminent danger. Ultimately, he chooses to return to the club, demonstrating his personal growth and willingness to confront challenges head-on. After rescuing the Penguin, he faces pressure to abandon Sophia and flee, showcasing the complexity of his loyalty. Episode 4 takes us on an exciting and tense journey, beginning with the fallout from the previous events. The Penguin struggles to rebuild trust with Sophia, but during his first real test, it becomes clear that he still lacks integrity. For Sophia, this betrayal cuts deeply. By the episode's end, she gains clarity about who is responsible for her brother's death, heightening anticipation for the unfolding events. Following the shocking incident, Sophia reaches out to her doctor, the last person she feels she can trust. A flashback reveals Sophia in a striking red dress, a choice laden with symbolism. The color red alludes to drugs and violence, foreshadowing the tragedies she is destined to face. Sophia openly expresses her resentment at being disrespected, a moment that highlights her inner strength. The episode deepens dramatically as we explore Sophia's tumultuous relationship with her father, Carmen Falcon. While the viewers may perceive Carmen as a villain, he views himself as a loving father, accentuating the clash of personalities at play. Hints emerge that Carmen doubts his daughter's abilities, wielding his attempts to undermine her self-confidence as a means of control. The dialogue also delves into the theme of political corruption within the city, introducing a new character from the comics, the corrupt congressman. This narrative thread reflects the lengths to which those craving power will go, often at the expense of others. Returning to Sophia's past, we witness her enduring profound emotional shocks, propelling her desire for revenge into the forefront of her motivations. 
As the episode unfolds, the strained relationship between Sophia and Carmen becomes increasingly evident. Carmen utilizes his daughter as a pawn to fulfill his own interests, all while disregarding her feelings and aspirations. The plot thickens when we recognize that the men in Sophia's life have consistently attempted to mold her according to their own visions. This internal struggle not only strengthens Sophia's character, but also places her in a precarious position, battling against the expectations imposed on her. Sophia seizes an opportunity to assert herself as a leader, paving the way for new possibilities. The climax of the episode marks her transformation from a character shaped by exploitation to one who can command her own destiny. This pivotal moment carries profound symbolism, reflecting Sophia's growth and her liberation from the constraints imposed by those around her. The events of the fourth episode leave us in a heightened state of tension and anticipation as the drama intensifies and corruption is unveiled in its, in its most blatant form. The characters become increasingly intricate, and with each episode, viewers find themselves ensnared in a web of conflicts and intrigues. By the episode's end, the narrative keeps audiences eager to discover how Sophia will navigate her relationships with the other characters. The fourth episode serves as a thrilling exploration of Sophia's internal struggle, illuminating the complex dynamics between her and those around her, particularly her father. This portrayal compellingly reflects the realities of intricate family relationships within the realm of crime. As we look forward to the fifth episode, it is clear that the story is poised to escalate tension further and deliver even more surprises to its viewers. As we wrap up this deep dive into The Penguin, it's evident that we're witnessing something exceptional in the realm of superhero television. This series distinguishes itself not only through its compelling characters and gripping storylines, but also by reinvigorating the essence of the classic gangster dramas we all know and love. Colin Farrell's portrayal of the Penguin is a masterclass in nuance, pack, skillfully blending vulnerability and menace that keeps us on the edge of our seats. With each episode, we're pulled deeper into the murky waters of Gotham's criminal underbelly, where power struggles, betrayal, and moral ambiguity reign supreme. It's a stark departure from the overly polished superhero narratives we've grown accustomed to, and that's exactly what makes it so refreshing. If you enjoyed this breakdown and want to see how the story unfolds, be sure to catch the upcoming episodes of The Penguin. And don't forget to share your thoughts in the comments. What do you think of the direction the series is taking? Thanks for tuning in to Nerdtown. Remember to like and subscribe for more content that dives into the heart of your favorite shows. As always, stay nerdy, my friends.